All righty. So far, all of our KEQ expressions have been written using concentrations. So from here going forward, we're going to specify that when we do this, it is a K with the subscript C, where the C represents concentration. Now, if we have all gases, you can, if you have, I mean, you can always write a KC for a reaction that has gases in it, um, but you need concentration values in order to properly calculate that. Um, but if you have something with all gases, you can write a KP, and you have to have all gases in the reaction because you have to have pressure information for the components of that reaction. So we can write a KP, which instead of concentration, we'll use the partial pressures of the different components. So as an example, you should find that nothing about this is surprising and that the only thing I need to let you know is the exact notation to make sure that you're indicating pressures rather than concentration. So my reaction is going to be 2SO3 gas in equilibrium with 2SO2 gas and O2 gas. So if I write a KP expression, it is still products over reactants. I'm going to use parentheses, not brackets, right? Because brackets designate concentration. So I'm going to make sure that this is not related to concentration in notation. And then I'm going to write P for pressure with a sub SO2. And that entire quantity is going to be squared. And then I'm going to multiply it by PO2 to the first power. And then divide by the pressure of SO3. And this quantity is also squared. Now, you might see some examples that don't have parentheses around these individual pieces. I would like you to include them just for clarity and to make it easier for me to tell and for you to tell me that we all know what's going on in this situation. All right. Now, I do want to just put up the KC expression for this so that we can do a little comparison, right? If I have enough information to work with this in concentrations, I could do the concentration of SO2 squared times the concentration of O2 divided by the concentration of SO3 also squared. Now, the thing about this is that these two expressions are not numerically equal to each other. So the expression format is the same. The notation is different so that we can tell if we're looking at pressures or concentrations. And then the actual value is not going to be the same between these two. So we should talk about this. The good news is that we just have an equation that I'm going to give you that you would need to use. It requires an assumption, and that assumption is that we have ideal gases, which thankfully we'll always be able to assume here. If what you have is a KP, but what you need to use is a KC or vice versa, you can convert these values because KP is equal to KC times, in parentheses, this is RT, and that quantity in parentheses is to the delta N power. And that's going to be the change in the number of moles of gas. So if you think back to what our generic reaction looked like, where we had A plus B going to C plus D, what we're talking about is taking 
C plus D and then subtracting A plus B. So in this example that we just did, the SO3, SO2, O2, the product coefficients are two plus one. The reactant coefficients, it's just a two. So my delta N here would be one. Okay, so this is how you would do that calculation. And you will see some examples of this in the problem set for this module. All right, so something else that came up at the very beginning of the first semester of chemistry is how important it is to include units on everything. However, we have not put any units on our equilibrium constants. So why KEQ has no units is what we need to talk about next. And this applies to KC and KP. And the reason that this happens is because the concentrations and pressures are expressed relative to a standard. And that standard is gonna be either one molar or one atmosphere. So what we're technically doing is canceling the units before we put them into the expression. So if, for example, the concentration of NO2 is equal to 1.5 molar in a reaction that has an equilibrium constant expression of NO2 squared over NO squared times O2. What we mean is that the NO2 concentration is 1.5 molar relative to a one molar standard. This cancels out the units and then the value of 1.5 is what I would take to plug into my expression. All right, the last piece that we need to include here is a discussion of solids and liquids. So we haven't had any reactions with solids and liquids in them yet. And we will have reactions like this come up, but we don't include them in the equilibrium constant expression at all. So concentrations, because we don't we don't have pressures for these things, so we're gonna stick with just concentrations of pure solids. So this means it has to have an S in that state that is listed after it, which is why it's super important that we still include these. And pure liquids, which have the letter L as their state designation are not included in any KEQ expression because their concentrations are considered constant. And they basically are constant.
So before reaching equilibrium, after reaching equilibrium, there's no change in the concentrations of a solid or a liquid. So they don't give us useful information about the balance of products and reactants. Um, so they don't get included in the KEQ expression. Um, you will see some reading that kind of builds up the KEQ expression as a law of mass action, and it will assign an activity to solids and liquids of one, which just lets them drop out of the expression. What I'm going to ask you to do is, in addition to using these things, but for the, the equilibrium constant expressions, I will ask you to write the expression. So my expectation is that you will be able to look at any reaction, include only what's needed, so don't include the solids or liquids. And if I ask for a KP, write it in that form. And if I ask for a KC, write it in that form. So let's just do two quick examples so that you can see what this would look like for solids and liquids. So for the reaction, CaCO3 solid in equilibrium with CaO solid and O2 gas. Um, I can write a KP for this reaction because I've got two solids and a gas. So the only thing that shows up in my expression is the gas. So products over reactants, it's going to be the pressure of O2 gas. Well, the CaO is a solid, so it doesn't show up. And then the reactants, it's also a solid. So this is it. This is my entire equilibrium constant expression for this reaction. And I could write it as a KC as well if I wanted to. Um, let's do one more with that does have a KC expression. This is going to be Fe2O3 solid plus 3CO gas in equilibrium with Fe solid plus 3CO2 gas. And my KC expression, on the product side, um, I've got iron as a solid, so it's just a CO2, and that coefficient is three, so I'm gonna cube it. And then on the reactant side, I've got a solid, and then CO is a gas, so I can include that and that is also cubed.